Welcome back in the Rover Sports, guys, and uh, I'm really excited that football is back, and I'm excited to bring to you guys today a film review. We did a lot of these last year, and I'm going to try my best here to convey some messages about the quarterbacks and, and try to make some conclusions based on this preseason game that we just saw. There was a lot of dead time between the preseason games, and uh, we're going to try to uh, get everything rolling and working as best as we can. So, I'm going to do Robert Griffin today and um, Lamar Jackson. I'm going to do the Baltimore Ravens quarterbacks. So, here we see RG3. He was plagued by drops all game. I mean, we had a Denzel Perryman drop earlier in the game. See a little bit of jet sweeps here. Robert Griffin, this wasn't his fault. He called, th there was a um, free play. He tried to go deep. You see there the tackle uh, could not retain the block on the edge. So not Robert's fault at all there. He's just trying to make a play. Here you see some nice elusiveness from, from Griffin here. So... So Robert's able to buy time. He's able to look, see there's a free rusher there. And he's able to get outside the pocket. Pumps a little bit, throws a very catchable football. Guy makes run after catch. So again, showing some of the instincts that he had in Washington. Then this throw, I think, is a pellet. This is a hell of a job by Robert. And then, here you see the velocity. You see the balance. And this is just an incredible throw between two defenders. Just Robert Griffin there just playing with a lot of decisiveness, playing with maybe some confidence, trying to prove something, but also playing with some balls to thread the needle there on time. And he finds that that's not Hayden Hurst. It's number 86, which uh, I have no idea who the heck that guy's going to be. So here you see Griffin. We actually get a little bit of a progression job from Griffin here. And he, and he owns the pocket here, which I really, really like. I mean, there's not a lot of waste in motion. It's half field read. So 49 goes over here. And then Griffin's able to just throw it in there. And a ton, a ton of velocity behind these throws by Robert. I mean, this is just awesome stuff. The reason why Robert wasn't successful is he'd often, you know, want to run out, scramble too much. He'd often have trouble reading quickly. He'd have trouble with durability issues, with leadership issues. And here in this game, Griffin, though, he just seems to be taking a better approach to things this time around. He seems to be, you know, with his teammates. And, and then you see the touchdown throw there on an easy bootleg to the tight end again. So overall, just a tremendous, tremendous drive by Robert. And and, and here you see his, his motion's a tiny bit loopy, but not at all something that you should get concerned about. I mean, Griffin just showing a ton, a ton of upside. And... I mean, if, if something happens to a quarterback, like you even look at Tampa Bay, if Jameis Winston, if they have to cut Jameis Winston, Griffin is so far, he's one of the best options that I think we're going to see in this preseason. I mean, he's going to be a guy that can probably be like a Nick Foles in terms of not like in terms of the success, but in terms of he is one of the next guys in waiting. Because there's just so many things that I was really, really impressed with. And here's one of the throws that Griffin missed. And again, he was plagued by awful, 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 you know, offensive line play. So here you see Griffin. There you see a little bit of reading. The throw here, I mean, listen, the guy does look like a complete stick figure out there. He looks like he's been on some kind of just like hippie diet where he's not eating, you know, any substantial protein. He looks really, really thin. That's the thing about Griffin is that he was probably on that Ricky Williams type of, you know, rehabilitation trip wherever uh, Griffin went with his career and everything. So he just needs to bulk up, but the absolute, you know, raw talent is totally, totally there. So, um, 
Here you see, though, with Griffin, the, the, the throw here is a tiny bit loopy. It's a little bit... So here you see the ball's a little bit low, a little bit behind him. His, he strides into the ball using a lot, a lot of body power. Like, look at his lower body. It looks like he's gliding into the throw a little bit. So you want to see maybe the little body be a little bit more still. Like, like for example, I'm going to go ahead and, and try to... Uh, Try to show you guys this uh, the throwing motion here of Griffin because this is the longest throw attempted all day. So you see here the strides are fine, are fine. The eyes, the shoulders. He uses his shoulders beautifully to manipulate stuff here. Ah, let me go back a tiny bit. So again, we don't have the all 22, so we can't see what the defense is doing. We can't see cover two. We can't see cover three. And to tell you the truth, I'm still trying to gather that information. I haven't really played the game of football. But here's Griffin striding the feet. You want to see that front foot get in the ground. But this is a very good throw. And now I'm going to show it in real time. This guy is supposed to. He's trying to protect this receiver. You can tell. This is a young kid. Like, these are kids he's playing with. He's trying to protect. The guy's supposed to sit in this cover. I, I bet it's cover one. I bet it's like a cover one kind of look where the middle of the field's not open. Or maybe it's cover two. And there you see the throw was purposely trying to protect him from the linebacker. You don't want to lead your receiver right into the linebacker. And here you see on third down, the pocket just completely collapses. Let's see what kind of guards. You have Bradley Bozeman out of Alabama. He's in the game. I think Orlando Brown from Oklahoma, who hadn't given up a sack. I think he does a nice job here. I mean, he does kind of get pushed back, but these, look at the guards here. The guards and the tackles get completely pushed back. They can't win their matchups at all. They rush three guys, and it's third and eight, and you're dead, and there is no running game to support at all. So here you're going to see some good, good stuff from Griff. I mean, like, you watch here. Climbs makes a nice decisive decision to Hayden Hurst and Hurst had a decent game. He is like a Colby Fleener type, a little bit undersized, but he he at least get on the field. I don't know if Mark Andrews is signed. There is no sightage of him yesterday in the game. So a lot of screens. There you see um the offensive line struggles again. Let's see Griffin's eyes right here. He does step up a little bit. I mean, you see, I don't like the way he's holding that football right there. I mean, in, in this uh, second play right here, he kind of panics a tiny bit. So let's just watch this. It's not terrible, but you want to see him have two hands on the ball. Like right here, the step up part. Ah, uh, great, and I just accidentally went all the way back. Excuse my deficiencies on NFL Game Pass. We're finally back to the point. So he did get, he did, the guy did get completely lit up on, uh, and here you see Griffin do a great job of stretching for the first down. You're going to see him stretch for the first down. And here's the actual play. I mean, he does hesitate a little bit. He throws a really good ball. It's just a really good hit by Dion Bush there. Third and 11. The pocket collapses. He does as much as he can. He's still, the game's still, you could tell the game is still a little bit, tiny bit fast for him because he's, he's sprinting a little too much. Like, try to buy a little bit of time there. But again, I can't complain. Like, the dude Robert Griffin, I'd mark him a B-plus for this game. I mean, there were no deep explosive plays. You want to see a little more exotic play calling. And you'll see bits and pieces, but it's preseason again. And Marty Morningweg, I mean, I'm not a huge Morningweg fan. I think he's from the old school, and he has to prove a lot to me. So here's Lamar Jackson. We get a little bootleg there. I mean, he holds the ball out. I mean, you can see the speed of Lamar Jackson. Third and 11 now for Jackson. So you could tell that the offensive line is pitiful. 
on this particular play and, and kind of throughout the ball game. So Jackson strides. He strides back so far, almost like you're playing Madden. Oh, you're very afraid of the rush. He's going like eight yards back every time. That's the one thing. And, and, and here the pocket does collapse on him. He tries to make a play happen. The game is just going a million miles per hour for Lamar Jackson. He's not being really developed at all. But, you know, I, I do have a lot of concerns about Lamar Jackson. I had concerns before this game, and I had concerns before the draft. He does bring an element of running to the table, but I'm just concerned if you could stay healthy, if you could play that way for a long, long time. I mean, Michael Vick is obviously one of the guys that changed the game, but Wilson is a guy that really scrambles to throw the ball. But here you see Lamar, a huge drop. You see that he's literally like 10 yards back. Here he does buy time very well. Looking down the field, I guess he gives it a fair chance, but then he's off and running with the ball. And here I want to see him slide because this is just dangerous. He needs to learn how to slide to stay healthy. And then here's Jackson too. He's just reading one field, uh, you know, one side of the defense. He's not really, you know, taking in what the defense is offering to him. He knows he's probably going to throw the ball to Hayden Hurst. The throw in terms of his mechanics and everything, it's a loopy throw, but the guy does have some arm talent. You can tell there by a couple of throws in this game that the guy does have touch. And then this is his best throw of the game. You see some potential with this throw, honestly. You see him slide here off of his right foot. And this is just this is just really good arm strength. And he really got through that ball nicely. So that that was a that was a shining moment for Lamar Jackson. Here he gets his receiver almost killed by what he's doing right here. But you see a little bit of touch. You want to see a little bit of a, a, a more assertive throw, obviously, there into a, a tight window. And these are a lot of one-field reads. You're not really seeing manipulation. Um, there he protects Hayden Hurst, throws a nice touchdown pass. So let's see if we can get more Jackson here. So the game just looks like it's going just a million miles per minute. And when you watch Josh Rosen, you're probably going to see other guys that in their first game are a little bit different. Here you see Jackson. I give him credit. He needed to kind of step up in the pocket to his left there. He didn't do that. And then this is actually, for a throwaway, that's pretty impressive. I mean, to see the guy chuck the ball, you know, going to his left. I mean, you could see the potential there. And you see him square and can throw the ball at least like 35 yards on a dead run out to the left. So even in that, that was that was pretty efficient. And then this throw here, you see a slow drop back from Lamar Jackson. You see him not eye up the corner at all. The corner just breaks on the route and the ball's not outside, which is something he needs to work on. He likes throwing down the middle of the field. The footwork's okay. Kind of striding off of his back foot if you watch that again. And, and the receiver doesn't carve out his area of the ground either. So it's a little bit of a combination, but the throw needs to be outside. And he needs to kind of eye up that cornerback and not take that sort of risk with the football. This ball needs to be outside. The drop, you know, is in the terms of the speed. He could get a lot faster, a lot better. He's still fading away. You guys can kind of see that too. I mean, he's fading away. He's not putting his foot in the ground at all. So I want to see the guy put the foot in the ground right here. And he does do that a little bit, but, you know, the throw, the throwing motion's loopy. It's not a tight spiral at all. And the throw is very inaccurate, you know, leading to the D. You got to put it in a spot where only your guy can get it. Very basic elementary stuff from the Ravens. Here you see Jackson too, and, and the offensive line is pitiful. But he's, he's doing a lot of one read and go kind of stuff. But yeah, I mean, that, that's just embarrassing. I think you actually had, like, I'll tell you what Lamar can also improve on in a second because I kind of vividly remember this play. 
So as Lamar gets in the league, he's going to have to learn how to do two things. He's going to have to learn how to set protection, and he's going to have to learn snap count cadence because we have ta- we have a veteran in the preseason. I think his name, it's number 53, who I've always liked for the Chicago Bears. He's a guy that plays really, really hard. His name is John Timu. He's from Washington. And here he's going to, to announce himself that he's blitzing. And Lamar here, he completely just hikes it exactly during the cadence. And you could see Timu just break in on there, unimpeded to the quarterback. So Lamar Jackson, just everything's just sped up at this stage. Tyler Bray played really well. I might need to do a film review on him. But I'm worried about Lamar Jackson. If I had to predict one thing from the preseason game, I mean, I'm very concerned just about like how his game can apply to the NFL. You know, it's one thing to do it in the ACC, but can this guy be a consistent, consistent quarterback that can throw and beat you from the pocket? Can he consistently read defenses? Can he get cadences correct? Can his can can he actually hang in the pocket and actually establish the space? There's a there's a better throw from Jackson, but again, the ball, the way he throws the ball, it's a little bit like Josh Allen. It's a tiny bit quirky, but there you see the throw was a good throw. This is not a good play by Jackson here. I mean, you gotta see, you gotta actually throw the ball with a little bit of velocity. This play is all over the place. It just was a very sloppy, sloppy performance from Lamar Jackson overall. And he didn't get a lot of time. But there you see the strides. The footwork's a little bit choppy. In terms of the reads, let's see his eyes. I mean, the game's just going a million miles per hour. So, there you see him. He's just eyeing the one guy. The no shoulder or eye manipulation there. And overall, there, there's just a ton to clean up with Jackson, and it's up to him to do it. I mean, there there is some potential in terms of buying time, in terms of space. But I, so I have my doubts about Lamar Jackson. And if I had to pronounce something like, I think that Rosen and Mayfield are in a league of their own. I think that Darnold certainly has concerns, but I would take Darnold over Lamar Jackson. And I would also, I mean, Josh Allen and Lamar, you know, pretty similar. I would take Allen, though. So I I am a little bit worried about Lamar Jackson in terms of um, just speed of the game, in terms of that the release being low, and in terms of if this guy can really be a consistent passer. Because I think Ozzie Newsome in his last year, I think he just played on the roulette table. You know, drafting tight ends, drafting Lamar at the end of the first round, kind of doing the kid a solid. I think it was more of an emotional pick than an actual reasonable pick with the system. And I think that Joe Flacco is going to hold down the job there for, for years. So um, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. You see some speed. He's got to get down there. You see a couple of things that you like on tape. But thanks, guys, for hanging in there, watching the show. We got more quarterback film reviews. Subscribe. Check it out. Thank you.